Hey there everybody, this is Camzilla51. It's a good Saturday night and today I wanted to show you something that I've been wanting to make for a really, really long time now. This is Camzilla Fixes Stuff. The new show where I teach you how to restore G1 toys or strip paint or do stuff to improve your action figures. Now today, we're looking at G1 Starscream. Now I've owned this boy for... <laughs> quite a while, and I've always wanted to uh, improve his stickers because the condition in which I got him was a little worse for wear, as you can see. I've done a few of these G1s before, and I wanted to save one to show you guys how I do it, and uh, maybe you can learn something along the way. So here we go. The first thing we're going to try and do is remove his stickers and give him a little bit of a clean. Now the problem that a whole lot of G1 stickers have is dust. You can see it especially here in the little intakes, you can see it on the feet, and it's just nasty. Plus, a lot of these can be really grody, and the rib stickers here on Starscream are particularly hard to apply, so a lot of people who put them on back in the day did kind of a shoddy job. But, I mean, hey, everyone was a kid back then, so can't really blame them. So today what I'm going to show you how to do is use Goo Gone and a little bit of Clorox wipes and we're gonna strip all those stickers so we can have a brand new surface to stick some repro labels on. So here we have Starscream kind of stripped down to his bare bones so that we can work at him easily. Now the first thing you can notice is that his eye stickers were either not applied or fell off with the wear and tear and the play of the previous owner. So we're definitely gonna replace those but the first thing we're gonna take care of is we're going to remove the stickers that are already here. So what I usually do is I use this X-Acto knife. Now this one, you can see, is already peeling up and it's just gonna be an easy little thing to remove. And this little residue here, this we're gonna take care of with Goo Gone, not Goof Off. There's a very distinct difference. Goo Gone is the one that's safe to use on Transformers. So what I'm using here is just a careful little technique to try and pry up any bit of this sticker that I can. The trick is to try your best, there we go, the trick is to try your best not to touch or scratch any of the paint. And you just want to get the majority of the sticker off if you can. Uh, the rest of it, there we go, that was nice. The rest of it is just easy enough to remove with the Goo Gone and using a Q-tip. And we're gonna get to that. See it's already coming off really easy. Some of these stickers are easier to remove than others, of course. I mean, due to the fact that these are G1s and sometimes they can be a little bit temperamental, some of these can be really caked on there. Some of these can have just the worst condition stickers ever. I mean, I know, I know everyone's seen them. Some of these are more forgiving than others. That's the point I'm trying to make. So right now, I'm trying to remove this really wonky sticker that comes across his ribs. So I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and just carefully try and get the majority of it and that failed once again I'm gonna try and get the majority of it now in case you're worried about potentially taking the value off of these G1 toys remember Transformers fans in particular put a high value on correct sticker placement as I as I learned from the most recent G1 price guide that I found at Barnes & Noble, uh, apparently there isn't really that much value taken off of a G1 toy if it is simply replaced with repro labels for the G1 stickers. That doesn't devalue the toy a whole lot, which is fantastic because it, uh, it puts a little bit of ease on your shoulders. Because remember, a lot of kids back in the day, they didn't really get the stickers all that all that well. Not to mention the factory people who put on the uh, pre-applied factory stickers, they didn't really do that much of a fantastic job either. So this is an opportunity to really take it into a collector's hands and make it perfect. And for the most part, Repro Labels gets it pretty on the head uh, as far as reproductions go. There are some slight changes, but um, I, I suppose that's for the sake of a collector not being swindled into thinking that some stickers are authentic when they really aren't. And I'm going to be sure to cover that when I cover the uh, sticker reapplication. Because these are definitely going to need a tutorial. These rib stickers here. I tried these on the world's smallest star screen. It was a little bit simpler down at that scale. So I, th I think I've got, I think I've gotten a little bit of a head start shall we say, on how to apply these. It's kind of a little bit of a papercraft origami trick here. 
uh, as, as you can see, there's a lot of folding going on. And it, it really takes precision to make sure that you don't wrinkle the sticker and make things worse for yourself. So there we go, we've already gotten the ribs done. So for these shin stickers here, you can see that there's kind of a molded line in the center of it that really shows out through the stickers. Now this, of course, isn't intentional, but what I did on my uh, reissue Optimus Prime is after I'd already made sure that the plastic was bare, I took a sanding block one of the things that uh, girls will use for their nails that has like six different sides on it it helps you to sand and then buff and it was just the right thing for this kind of project and I decided to sand down the seam here in between the uh, the transition between these two pieces of plastic the reason I wanted to do that is because of course, the designers originally intended for this sticker to just kind of bridge the gap. And as a personal thing, I think it's a little unappealing. I don't prefer it. So I, I tend to try and avoid it if I can. It didn't bother me, but it bothered my friend Josh, who is a big collector of, of G1 toys. And uh, I, can, I can understand how just gently sanding down the seam there might annoy some G1 fans. So I understand if it's not for you, but I want to do it, since I think it'll make my G1 toys that much crisper. The underlayer paper of this one is proving to be a little bit difficult, so I think I'm going to move on and just take care of it when I go over it with Goo Gone. So Camzilla fixes stuff. It's a, it's a fun little series I've been really wanting to try and do for a while now. On my lineup, I've got G1 Hoist, G1 Sandstorm, and G1 Blitzwing. But since I got Starscream first, uh, I wanted to take care of him first, because he's been waiting the longest to receive his new stickers. But for this video series, I have things planned like sticker removal, like we're doing right now, cleaning of figures, disassembly of figures, sticker reapplication, responsibility as far as buying G1s on the internet goes, retaining new accessories off the internet, tightening some old joints, and maybe if we're lucky, I'll learn how to fix chrome, because that is definitely something that uh, that causes people to choose a different G1 toy on the uh, aftermarket G1 chrome wear it's something that's um it's it's tricky to fix of course all G1 chrome is super mirror like and it's hard to find a paint that accurately meets that perfect mirror there are paints out there for chrome finishes but not all of them live up to the hype and not all of them follow through on their expectations unfortunately. So I'm going to do a little bit more research on that one before I make a video, but that is that is the goal, is to try and uh, figure out how to do all these things before I, before I put them forth into the ether. If you see anything that I'm doing and you think that uh, there's a better way that I could go about it, please uh, let me know. I'm always eager to learn and see how somebody else does it, because there's definitely more than one way to skin a cat. This one's being a little bit difficult towards the toe. Maybe I might leave that one to the goo gone. Yeah, we're moving on. These poor stickers, uh, they, they just, they weren't made all that fantastically back in the day. I mean, if they survive 30 years, it's really, it's really an amazing feat to see. Which is why you rarely ever see a whole bunch of G1 figures that have fantastic sticker condition. Not to mention, I mean, most of the people who got these weren't experts back in the day. And it's not their fault. I mean, they just had a, had a wonderful time. But they were certainly no repro labels, that's for sure. So there we have it. The legs are done, the rib cage is done, and now we can take care of the back stickers up here. Now, if you want to leave some stickers on your G1 toy, that is perfectly acceptable. You just have to be sure that you remember which stickers they are and that you uh, accurately represent which ones have been changed if you were to ever resell it. There we go, we'll just puncture that, because why not? The main concern with most G1 collectors is resale value. They want to make sure that they keep the figure as pristine as they possibly can, because uh, these things certainly can fetch for a pretty penny if they're well taken care of. On this particular specimen, I, I think I've decided that I want to... Um, remove all of the stickers so that I can keep everything having the same wrinkle-free, fresh-looking finish. Funny story, this Starscream in particular has me scratching my head for what specific version it is. Because, I mean, on the side here it says Takara Company LTD 1980-1983 Japan, right? 
it also has these wings that have the uh, non-sharp nubs on it. And um, after looking at, at some source material all over the internet and trying to see what the different versions of Starscream were, I'm confused as to... Uh, oh, by the way... My particular version has the springs. It's hard to tell exactly what my version is. It could be a pre-rub Starscream. It could be a Japanese version of Starscream. I'm not entirely sure. This is one of those unsolved mysteries. But that's kind of what you get sometimes when you when you buy a figure online through eBay or through uh, one of the group pages on Facebook. They can really vary. So you got to be sure that you ask a lot of questions. Where did this come from? Are you the first buyer? Are you the third owner? Do you know anything about this figure's history? Anything like that not only is fascinating but is informative for um, however the the history of the figure is. Now as you can see right now I've, I've stripped most of the paper of this but there's still a lot of adhesive still on on top of this paint and I'm certainly not going to go after it with this knife. I'm going to go and treat that with the Goo Gone. And the wonderful thing about the Goo Gone is that it's not going to damage any of that paint. All of that is perfectly safe. I'm having a hard time finding a starting point. I might do the same thing that I did for the uh, other sticker and just start here. Since I'm going to replace this uh, and there's no way to remove a sticker without ruining it, I think I'm just going to go for this. Yeah, there we go. That's a good start. And we'll just start stripping it off. Now, don't feel bad if you can't get the majority of the sticker and if you just want to start with the goo gone that's totally fine but I like to do this step because it makes the goo gone step a lot easier Ooh. I mean the less you have to work through the better right man this one just does not want to come up oh there we go okay so a little bit of the edge there uh, coincidentally I like applying my labels with an exacto blade as opposed to a tweezer I, I like that I get to put my finger on it. I like like that. It's super thin and I can use a flat surface as opposed to a pair of tweezers that sometimes can put a little center dent in a sticker whenever you take it off the label sheet. So there we go. I think I'm going to just stop at that for now. I probably could go a little bit further, but I think this is satisfying for now. So there's the main figure as it is all, uh, all de-stickerfied. And he's not a conehead. Now we're going to do the wings. I'm going to start from up here and see if I can get that. Now if I put any accidental scratches in this, I think I should be able to re-sand that down. Oh, it's being a babe. Look at that. Okay, you know what? I spoke too soon. There we go. Start from the other end. Maybe we'll have more luck there. There we go. Yes. Okay. Now normally I wouldn't touch a sticker with my bare fingers, but since this sticker is kind of going away, uh, shit, since this sticker is kind of going away, I don't feel all that bad about it. Come on, come on. Yeah. This kind of helps keeping the, uh, the level at the sticker from which I'm pulling really low and uh, keeping my finger directly on it as I scoot along. That seems to be really helpful. Now these Decepticon stickers themselves aren't necessarily poorly placed, but there is a little bit of extra flash up here from the from the paper sheet, and this one is poorly aligned with the other one. They just aren't perfect. As I said, Transformers collectors like myself are particular sticklers for, uh, for stickers that are perfectly applied. So yeah, I'm gonna remove those as well. And when you're doing this, make sure that you apply with the full flatness of the blade and you're just trying to get in between the sticker and the plastic because you don't want to attempt to try and just completely scrape the plastic free from all sticker because you might actually begin to carve and fillet that plastic and you really don't 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 do that you don't want to try that it's a bad idea this is this is to a point where really I would just be kind of a stickler for still trying to go at it and uh, I could just go with the Gugon like I said and I think I've gotten most of the shiny part of it so at this point it'll just wet up with the Gugon and uh, it'll just roll right off so I think this one is good for now we'll set that aside and move on it seems to be doing okay for now keep going keep going damn it 
Ah, damn it. There we go. Oh, that looks nice. Come on, keep going for me. Keep going. Oh, this is working nicely. Great. We're almost there. Splendid. All things considered, this one looks like it really survived the 30 years pretty well. It's not all that damaged, and here I go just to fuck it up. Why must I ruin everything beautiful? This one is being a little difficult on me. It's probably being defiant. If all else fails, remember, you can use your fingernails to kind of just scoot it along. It's not the most elegant, and uh, if you don't have fingernails, if you, if you keep them well maintained, this might be a little difficult for you. Fortunately, one of the last things I am is well maintained. So we're kind of just scraping it off there. Yay, we're destroying 30 years of history. There is a little part of me that's crying inside right now. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I grew up with Toy Story. Yeah. All right, that's good enough for now. We'll move on. Because so now we're going to tackle the tail fin accessories. Just pop that off. These ones are cool. I always thought maybe the F stood for uh, F-15, perhaps? I really am not entirely sure. I've never seen one of these uh, in person, let alone one with a color scheme as uh, entertaining as a Decepticon. Even if it isn't, I mean, it's still a really pretty tail-swept design. I've always enjoyed that. Speaking of stickers, I have a fantastic review coming in maybe a few weeks about the TFCC Blue Streak stickers that were just released towards the very, very end of the Collector's Club's run. That was super, super exciting because I got to talk to Jesse Wittenrich, who is the person who designed the stickers. And uh, it was super cool to get to talk to him and figure out his process behind it as well as uh, other things that he's worked on. He was, he was a really pleasant guy to talk to. So, I mean, I don't know, maybe you could consider that an exclusive interview, if you will, but, I mean, heck, I just got to shoot the shit for a little bit. So anyway, that's coming pretty soon. As far as Camzilla fixes stuff, I thought it would also be really neat to do videos where I just disassembled and cleaned a figure, because everyone's really curious about how G1 toys worked. How did they make them back in the day? What were their production methods? How do they think that a transformation would work? Um, I mean, these things certainly fascinated me, and if you're anything like me, and chances are you probably are, then you're probably just as curious. So those videos are going to be uh, fantastic for the people who just are hankering to know what does a G1 toy look like when you open it on up. Uh, a lot of people I know are hesitant to even touch these things with a screwdriver or even a even a duster sometimes, which is uh, kind of kind of a shame. But I understand where they're coming from, so I'm going to be the person who does it for them and who can show them what it looks like. So I sacrifice myself instead of them. Aren't I just a saint? And just in case you were curious, here's what a G1 Starscream looks like if I strip it of most of its value. Honestly, I'm not too phased about it because. It's going to look a lot better when I'm done with it. Now, as far as buying G1 figures off the internet goes, most of what I look for is stuff like... Oh. <laughs> most of what I look for is right here. Uh, I don't really care that much about stickers. I just pretty much care about how does the paint look? How does the plastic look? Has the plastic been gouged? Is the plastic itself broken? Loose joints, I can fix. Stickers, I can fix. Those are things that are perfectly okay. And if you see such a figure that is at a lower price just because it's got some sticker wear, go for it. Buy it. It'll be a fun little project and it'll look fantastic when it's all done. As far as paint goes, I tend to avoid that because there is a perfect color that has to be matched when it comes to finding the right thing to touch up the figure. See, as for me, I would rather put on a full coat and have the whole thing match rather than just having like this perfect red and then maybe touching up a couple of things that are just off color. I don't want to do that. There's a, there's a little bit of an allure to just having some nicks and scrapes here and there that I kind of find neat. If you don't, I perfectly understand. But otherwise, I'd have to strip the whole figure and then paint, and I'd like to avoid that if I can. But as for stickers, I mean, shoot, go for it. 
It's easy. So now that we've gotten all of that taken care of, what we're going to do now is we're going to go back over every stickered surface with a little bit of goo gone. Yuck. That was a mess.